Hey there, glue sniffers, and welcome back to another episode of The Model Guy. And in this episode, I'm going to be doing a quick build review of Edward's F4F-3 Wildcat. Those fine folks over at Edward also sent some extras for the kit for me to try out, and I didn't use all of them for this kit just because some of them are for the late Wildcat, and I planned on building that as well. But ones I will use for this kit will be the brass flaps, the resin wheels, and the gun barrels, which are printed in super clean, tight detail. As with other Edward kits, the instructions are very clear and concise and gives you some background information on the Wildcat. And as soon as I flip to that page, I pretty much chose my livery. One thing with Edward, though, is you do have to mark what markings you're doing through the instructions, as there are different variants in this kit. One thing I personally enjoy about the Wildcat is the way the landing gear is set up in the front of the aircraft. You can see everything that's going on up in there, and that's going to lead to some scratch detailing later. That does turn out to be a double-edged sword though because that means the modeling company has to capture as much of that detail as they can and still make it easy for the modeler to assemble. I spent some time test fitting everything before committing to glue and it was pretty straightforward assembling it. I can definitely see though that if you're someone that likes to pound through without test fitting that you would run into problems very quickly and then have a lot of problems downstream. As with all of Edward's Profi Pack kits, you do get some photo etch for the cockpit and it gives you a little bit more detail over the base kit. Like the Zero I reviewed earlier this year from Edward, the detail in the cockpit is quite phenomenal. The only sad thing is that the Wildcat has a very tight cockpit, so a lot of it's not visible. But if you're like me, that doesn't stop you from spending some time doing some nice detail painting or even adding some extra wire time to time. I'm not sure why the US Navy chose to use a silver lacquer paint inside their cockpits, as I imagine the light reflecting on that would be terrible on the pilots, but to replicate that, I used Mr. Color Silver 8. Edward would now have you glue the landing gear in place at an early stage of assembly, and that runs the risk of knocking the gear legs off. So what I did was I assembled the gear leg and used the firewall structure as a jig to make sure everything was aligned properly. I can't stress enough though how much you need to test fit all of this before committing it to glue. You should be doing that with everything when you're modeling, especially things like this that require other items for support and a proper fit. I let the gear legs dry overnight so they were set in position and then removed them so I could continue with assembly without worrying about knocking them off. Now to busy up the gear bay I've decided to add some parts of sprue and some lead wire just to give the impression that there's some hydraulic motors and pumps in place. Now this isn't a wire for wire hose for hose replica of what's going on in the Wildcat gear bay but just enough to give you an idea that it's a busy place to live. If this isn't something you fancy doing, but you still want that detail, Edward will be releasing a 3D print of the gear bay that you can plop in there. I also made sure to include the accessories being run off the back of the engine. To make painting easier for the engine mount and the rear of the engine, I painted it all with a Mr. Color Silver, which is a lacquer paint, and then painted it with a black acrylic paint so I could scrape it off afterwards have a nice clean line. This is also a good little hack if you don't have a steady hand and you wish to have a nice clean line when you're painting your cockpit. Things like instrument panels or radios that are a different color from the frame, you can just scrape off the acrylic paint afterwards gently with a wooden toothpick. If it seems like I'm jumping around quite a bit here from the instructions, you're right. I try to get all the parts together that are the same color, that way I'm not constantly cleaning and reloading the airbrush between parts. I'd rather paint everything that's silver once, and then come in and paint everything black, etc, etc. In the big picture, it actually makes you more efficient and makes the build go a little bit quicker. To bring out the detail in the gear bay and to make it look grimy, I used a dark brown oil wash. Instead of using black, which would have been more stark, I found dark brown was the better fit. It's dark enough that it gives you some good contrast, but not so dark it makes it look like a toy. This wash is going directly down on the lacquer paint and there is no clear coat applied. Now that the gear bay assembly is complete, I can start running the rest of the hydraulic lines and oil lines to their proper locations. It wouldn't take much to use the stock kit and build an aircraft that looks like it's going under a complete engine overhaul with all the panels off. Maybe I'll add that to my list of things I'd like to do, but we'll probably never get around to. I was very fortunate a few years ago because Greg Shelton brought his Wildcat to the Halifax International Air Show and he actually had it open out for the public to come in and see. And I was actually surprised to see how small this aircraft was in person. And I was also pretty st stoked to look underneath the gear bay and see everything leaking and how filthy it was. And I asked Greg, aren't you worried that you're losing a lot of oil and there might not be anything in there? And Greg simply said back, if there's oil still leaking on the ground, there's oil still in it. 
I think that is the perfect testament to sum up the Grumman Ironworks and how awesome and well put together the Wildcat was. Greg then went on to do a fully aerobatic performance with the Wildcat, and if you ever have a chance to check that out, you won't be disappointed. Moving on to the photo etch components of the cockpit, I use Micro Crystal Clear to glue it in place. That way, anything that sneaks past dries clear, and I can just remove it with some water. Once the wash was applied and tidied up, it was then time to bring the two fuselage halves together. And this is also an exciting moment in a build because it's one of the first major checkpoints that you're making progress. The two fuselage halves go together very well and there's no fit issues when you're bringing them together. The only part that didn't fit great and needed some putty was between the bottom of the horizontal stabilizer and the fuselage. I had to put a little bit of putty in here to clean up that gap. One area to take your time in is when you're assembling the elevators. They clip into place and I can definitely see here there'd be an issue if you force it or don't have it aligned. You'll end up snapping something. Now on to some surgery with the kit. And by using the brass flaps, it means I have to remove the lower section of the wing. And I use the JLC razor saw for this and take my time. You will, however, have to cut off the hinge covers with some side cutters. And you'll also have to take a little bit of time to sand the upper wing surface flush. That way the flaps fit in place. Because part of that rear wing was now missing, it took a few more minutes just to make sure everything was aligned with some test fitting before committing to glue. But once it's glued in place, there's no putty needed here at all. For cleanup on the cowling, I made some sprue goo. I took the shavings of the bottom of the top wings for the flap install and then added some cement. And I kept adding some cement until I had a honey-like mixture. And then I applied that to the styrene. And the nice thing about sprue goo over putty is that the sprue goo actually melts into the plastic and bonds better. And then you just come in and sand it and because it's the same material as the plastic, it's very easy to scribe. With the sprue goo drying, I then moved on to the flaps and started bending them with a jig. Remember, I'm trying to plan here so that there's no lulls in the build. While one thing is drying or paint is drying, I've moved on to something else. For securing the parts of the flap in place, I'm using some very thin super glue. You have to really take your time twisting those pieces before gluing them in place, and it's very easy to break them. And I won't be surprised if Edward offers the flaps as a 3D print as well. Out comes the razor saw again to rescribe the lost detail from cleaning up the seam. I make multiple light passes, that way I don't push the tape out of place and end up with a line where I don't want it. Now that all the cleanup was done on the model, it was time to move on to paint, and I spent a little bit of time trying to plan my approach to this, and in the end I figured it would be easier to paint the wings first in the yellow before painting the main fuselage in that lacquer silver. Edward was also kind enough to include a T-face mask with this kit, which allows you to mask the inside of your cockpit windows. With the wings now dry, I masked them off and moved on to painting the fuselage with Tamiya LP11. I found that it had a little bit more shine to it than the Mr. Color 8, making it perfect for the fuselage. After the fuselage was painted silver, I then moved on to painting the tail in that bright green. You'll notice that I also didn't go too crazy weathering this paint because this scheme was only used for a few months before the US Navy moved over to the neutral gray. The engine to the Wildcat is very nicely detailed and by simply adding some lead wire for the ignition lines, you can make it pop just a little bit more. And then all that detail was brought out with another oil wash. After a few passes of sprue goo and putty, the cowling was ready to be rescribed and then be painted. There are probably modelers out there who aren't going to want to do the filling and scribing, so I won't be surprised if an aftermarket cowling comes available soon. One area I thought I would have trouble with this kit would be putting on the long ID markings on the wings and fuselage. But by putting down some mark fit super strong before placing the decal, I was able to move it around and put it in place. Once I was happy with the positioning, I used a Q-tip to remove the excess fluid from underneath and then applied some mark fit super strong on top and then allowed it to dry for a full 24 hours. I found that after three or four, and sometimes even five coats of Mr. Mark Fit Strong, the Edward decals melt right down and that carrier film is barely visible. You do have to be careful though, because if you plan on peeling the decals carrier film and it's not fully seated, it's gonna tear up in places and that's gonna be frustrating for you. You'll notice on my wing walkways where the decal did peel up a little bit, but I decided to keep that as is because if I look at a reference photo, you can see that the walkways did peel up on some aircraft. So that's one of those happy accidents. 
I applied two thin coats of flat clear to the wings, but didn't apply any clear coat to the fuselage so I would keep that luster. So the panel line wash you're seeing here is going directly on top of decals on the fuselage. And once that panel line wash has had some time to dry, I wipe it away with a clean cloth. That is going to bring this build to a close. Edward, I really appreciate you sending me this kit for review. I really enjoyed it and I can highly recommend it to any builder out there wishing to build a Wildcat. I hope you, the viewer, have enjoyed this review and it helps you make a decision to purchase the kit. Lastly, I'd like to thank my patrons for their support. They've been able to see behind the scenes as this build progressed with high def photos and the accompanying blog. If you've enjoyed this build review and haven't already, please hit subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. I am the Model Guy and I'll see you guys later.